Hi, welcome to this tutorial video. This is for chapter one, section one, and this is an introductory chapter introducing you to some very important and biological vocabulary terms that I want you to know. Um, and later on in section 1.2, I'll introduce you to some very important themes in biology that we will revisit throughout our whole semester here. So these first two tutorial videos are all about introducing you to the study of biology. Now, of course, biology is the study of all forms of life. Here in this picture, you can see this is some type of insect. It is undoubtedly an organism, a, a type of living thing. It, it has adaptations. It, it, it tries to stay living by doing certain things. It tries to reproduce. Um, it probably has a name that some biologist has given it once it was discovered. Um, so we'll talk all about species and organism, things like that, um, in this video. So of course, Earth is home to all living things, at least the living things that we know about. And where you can find living things is called the biosphere. Now there are parts of Earth where you can't find living things, um, and we would not include those places in Earth as part of the biosphere. For example, the top of Mount Everest, there is nothing living there, I think. Um, so we would not include that in the biosphere. So again, the places where you can find living organisms of any kind would be included in the biosphere. An important thing to realize is that every part of the biosphere is connected. So here you can see some of the land environments or land ecosystems where you would find living organisms, but they're all connected. The tropical rainforests are next to and therefore connected to grasslands. And the nutrients and chemicals and even the organisms go back and forth between those ecosystems somewhat, and so they're connected in a very important way. Um, same thing with some of our other uh, ecosystems here that you can see. Um, you know, desert that you're very familiar with, to things like a taiga or a tundra, which you may not be as well familiar with, um, that we'll study this year. So they're all connected. Don't forget aquatic ecosystems like a tide pool, which is an ecosystem in itself, to these estuaries where freshwater rivers or streams flow into the ocean. You get really cool ecosystems um, setting up there. And also don't forget that portions of the atmosphere can also be very important parts of the ecosystems that they surround. Uh, birds and bats and insects are flying in the air, so it's certainly part of their ecosystem. Um, and bacteria are suspended like little particles in the air at all times. Um, so that is their environment. So that's part of the biosphere. So part of the atmosphere is also part of the biosphere. Our next important vocabulary term here is biodiversity. It simply means the variety of life, a number of different kinds of living things that we have in a given place or just overall on Earth. Now on Earth, if you start at the poles, you'll find certain kinds of organisms, probably not a lot. And then as you move closer to the equator, you'll find that you find more and more and more biodiversity or more and more types of living organisms or more species. Um, again, that's in general, and that, uh, that's, that has to do with aquatic ecosystems and land-based ecosystems. Um, and in general, you're, when you have consistently warm temperatures, you're also going to have higher diversity. And that makes sense. That's actually what governs the previous point here, which is the fact that as you move from the poles, which are generally cold places, you move towards the equator, which again are generally warm places, you're going to find more and more organisms. And you're going to see that all over the world in general. There are some places on Earth, I'm sure, where that theme doesn't apply. Um, but in general, again, as you move towards the equator, you're going to find more types of living things. Our next vocabulary term here is species. Species is just a type of living thing. Species, the root of that word, simply means kind. It's a kind of living thing. But how do you tell one kind of living thing is a different thing than another kind of living thing or a different species? Well, biologists use one main governing principle here, and that is that members of a species, a single species, can interbreed and reproduce to continue their species. You're not going to find one type of bird or one species of bird breeding with another species of bird to create some kind of hybrid. That doesn't really happen. You're going to find the species are breeding within their own species. And we know of about 2 million different living species. Now, scientists are finding new living species all the time. Um, but again, we know of about 2 million different kinds of living things on Earth. And that's all living things, from bacteria through other single-celled organisms, plants, fungi, animals. You can see these ants here. These are honeypot ants. So inside the, the catacombs of the, the ant uh, hill here. Um, these ants actually donate themselves to storing nutrients. So that's actually their abdomen that you can see there, uh, sort of swollen with nutrients, sort of a sugary substance that their other ant members of the colony are actually feeding on. So a very unique species. They're very unique from other ant species that you may know of or that scientists may know of. And so we call them a separate species. And of course, the honeypot ants only breed with other honeypot ants. And that further re uh, reinforces the fact that they are a single species of living thing. Now, all organisms, despite what species they are, share certain characteristics. So let's take a look at those. 
all are made of one or more cells. Now, a single-celled bacteria is made of one cell, and so that satisfies this criteria. It is a living thing, and a human is a multicellular organism made of hundreds of trillions of cells all working together. They are a multicelled organism, um, but again, you have to be made of at least one cell to be called a living thing. Now, what is a cell? Well, we'll get to that in some of our other uh, chapters. Here you can see a picture of the edge of a leaf, and I know it's not green, but it's under the microscope here. You can see that the hairs, and that this is a hair right here on the edge of the leaf, it's made of several different cells. So this is a multicellular organism. All organisms also need to get and use energy. Um, they do that by metabolizing the things that they eat or the way they get their energy. So energy governs life. You can't have a living organism that doesn't use energy. In fact, the definition of being dead or being no longer living is that the cells in the body or the cells of that organism no longer metabolize nutrients for energy. That's the definition of no longer being alive. Um, all living organisms are also going to respond to their environment. So given some kind of stimulus like changes in light or changes in moisture or changes in temperature, um, they're going to respond in some way. Again, the only way an organism would not respond would be is if they're no longer living, if they're dead. And we also know that all living things have DNA. We do not know of any living organisms on Earth that do not have DNA. And we'll talk more about what DNA is um, in some of our other chapters. But it's, it's a molecule that's found inside all living cells that allows cells to reproduce. And of course, that allows life to continue to carry on into the future. And DNA makes that possible. OK, let's do a little review. The biosphere includes all living things and the places in which they can be found. Remember, there are places on Earth where there are no living things. And every part of the biosphere is connected. You cannot have ecosystems that are not connected to other ecosystems, and you'll find out why later. Also, biodiversity is the variety of life, the number of different kinds of things that are on Earth. And remember, we've cataloged about 2 million different kinds of things on Earth. Another thing is that a species is one particular type of living thing. We know that a species is different than another species because they interbreed and can reproduce. We also know that they look different or they behave differently. And scientists also use some other things to differentiate species. Also, one main idea from the video here is that all organisms share some characteristics irregardless of what kind of species they are. First thing is that they're all made of cells, or at least one cell. They all need energy for metabolism. They all respond to their environment in some way. And finally, all the cells have DNA. So all organisms have DNA that they use to pass off traits to their offspring, allowing them to reproduce and allowing those organisms and that species to exist into the future. So there's our summary, and that's the end of our video.